as a kid, I saw Bible stories as being just that. Stories. Full of odd rules and strange beliefs that, to me, just didn't make much sense. I didn't hate the Bible at all, but the world it presented seemed so... small. They were myths, nothing more, and from a very young age I just knew that these stories shouldn't be taken literally. The world, to me, was quantifiable. It could be studied and understood without having to resort to supernatural explanations. I didn't want my world to be about the supernatural with slavish devotion to an unseen magical deity. Science proved that the world operates via natural processes and slow, gradual change and adaptation. And as a kid, that made sense to me. Gradually, I realized that all the gods we've ever known are just creations of people. And with so many gods to choose from, how could any one of them be the right one? And if there's a right god, does it mean that there's a right flavor and a right color and a right kind of music and a right kind of love? Human experience teaches us that life is subjective. What is right for you may not be right for someone else. Religion deals in absolutes, and as I look around, I see the suffering that attitude causes. I see the walls it puts up in people's lives, how it suppresses women, limits artistic expression and human potential, how it persecutes individuality and stifles innovation. Warlocks are enemies of God. And I don't care what kind of hero they are, they're an enemy of God. And had it been in the Old Testament, Harry Potter would have been put to death. Malala was only 11 when she first spoke out for girls' rights to go to school. I will get my education if it is in home, school or any place. What really? The world she knew was about to disappear. Her home valley of Swat in northern Pakistan came under the brutal rule of the Taliban. Now, the religiously devout challenge me to see God's handiwork in everything. But when I look about, I don't see things that have been instantly and divinely created and then planted, fully formed upon the earth for my enjoyment. I instead take greater comfort from knowing that the earth and the universe have changed and grown and evolved over billions of years. And then in some tiny way, I'm a part of that ongoing process. I see the stream running before me and feel a peace and a calm from it, not because of God supernaturally made it, but because everything around me, and myself included, are all products of the earth. Everything is connected. Everything influences everything else. How many eons has this stream flowed here? How many more will it? Over time, the landscape will change and the stream will find another course. Eventually, it'll stop flowing altogether. But it's here now, as am I. How many millions of years did it take for this flower and for the bee that collects its pollen to turn out the way they have? Well, science can and does tell us the answers. But this, of course, isn't the end result of that evolutionary sequence. Millions of years from now, these species may be extinct, or they may have evolved into different species. And I love that. And it makes perfect sense that the world goes on and keeps growing and adapting and evolving. 
The earth doesn't need divine inspiration and it doesn't need human intervention. It gets by just fine without either of those. I love atheism because it liberates us from religious dogma, free of ancient, outdated traditions that hinder progress, society and equality. Freedom is a precious thing, the freedom to think for yourself and to find your own path. This isn't in deliberate opposition to God. Atheists aren't on a quest to deny God. And this is because we just don't believe in God or any gods, just as we don't believe in unicorns. I love atheism because it looks to our fellow man and woman for guidance. But not only that, to our own intuition and common sense. And you know what? I think it's wonderful that us humans make mistakes. We aren't perfect and we never will be. We are gloriously imperfect beings and yet we strive to better ourselves and our understanding of the world we live in. For me, that is the meaning of life. To learn and grow and understand. To do good and to leave some kind of positive legacy. I love atheism because we make today the most important day instead of waiting for some divine reward at the end of our lives. Live now. Be happy now. Make now the most important moment. Atheists know this, and they take great comfort from it. So go on. Give it a try.